Please welcome back to the show the one and only Gary V. Yay! Gary, it's yes. so it's so so fantastic to have you here. And look, you know, I, we, we, we're going to repeat some things that we talked about last sure. time you were here, just to bring people up to speed. Maybe of they course. weren't listening that day. Of course. Um, you had this idea. Your 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 parents had a wine store, and you took it from a successful wine store yes. into a massive online wine monster. That's right. Because you figured out, and something we could all figure out, one little idea can actually be a massive idea if you actually do a little work and make it happen, or a lot of work, make it happen. You just beat me to the punchline. What I'm scared about is everybody's driving right now, everybody's in the office right now, everybody's sitting at home right now, and I was listening as you were prepping me to come in here, and I'm like, okay, I see how Elvis is setting this up, but I hope that everybody understands that the next thing I'm going to say is you have to work until your eyes are bleeding. For all my yay, yay, and rah, rah, I live on practicality. And this is what's practical. Elvis, everybody who's listening now who has college loans, mortgages, kids in school, they have to work their nine to seven. Me coming here in 1974 and saying, quit your job and follow your dream was not practical. In 2017, it is. Let me explain. When you're done with your nine to six, you come home if you choose to build something online from seven to midnight because you want a happier, better life or scratch an itch or you're entrepreneurial, you can do that with zero dollars and you can actually do it. And that is a game changer. Our grandparents did not have this. And so we can be practical and when we get home, you can play Call of Duty you can watch NFL every night, it feels like every day. You can turn on Netflix and watch The Crown for seven episodes in a row. Oh, it was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> or, or and, and again, you can do that because you're doing what you want to do and you're in a good spot. But what I'm trying to do this morning is eliminate complainers. If you're complaining, do something about complaining it. Complaining about what? Everybody's comp complaining about what? I like, mean, give me, uh, give, give me one thing people are complaining about that they should just shut up about. The government. Okay, do it. They should Go. shut up about the government. We live in America. The government has plenty of impact, but less than any other place in the world, and you have way more control. Other, uh, your boss. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if anybody knows, but slavery has been gone for a while. Your boss might be the biggest jerk of all time, but guess what? You can go get another job. You can go do what I just said a few minutes ago. Like, people just complain. Uh, my favorite thing to complain about? Things that happened a long time ago. This is a good one. The way your mom parented you 37 See, years yeah. ago. I, I can't stand that. You know what? Listen, here's a good thing. Because I, I, I always think of this show, because I used to listen to it as a kid growing up in Jersey driving. I kind of weirdly want people to pull over right now. I really, you know, if you, get, if you get letters or calls that people got into accidents, that's on you guys. I'm, I'm waving well, all you, my Gary. liability. Uh, I want you to pull over. I want you to look at that mirror, rear view mirror, right? That's yeah. what it's called. Thank you. Yeah. I want you to look at it. You need to understand if you look at it, it's your fault. What do you it's mean? Not, everything in life is on you. The biggest thing that I've been talking about in the last year is auditing your inner circle and cutting out the person that's bringing the biggest negativity. And mm -hmm. the truth is, I don't go very aggressively on this subject, Elvis. I'm even surprised I brought it up this morning. Why not? Why, why, why not because choose now to be aggressive about I'll, it? I'll tell go. you why. Because it gets to a crazy punchline, which is the person is usually somebody extremely close. Isn't that awful? Yeah, if, if you stop and think about it, you could actually, without thinking long about it, you could come up with that one name of that one person that you deal with every day that is is really kind of screwing you up, or are you allowed to screw you up? And so I it could be me. I could be screwing you guys up, Danielle, Bethany. You should you should leave. <laughs> Danielle, get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, 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 well, I mean like that. I mean, I, I'm keeping <laughs> I'm keeping you from success. No, but I, I, you know what? Listen, we're getting a, we went real heady real fast this yeah, morning. Yeah, okay, you're right. Bringing it a little bit back down. Here's the punchline. I want people to execute. I want them to realize that Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter are things that they can use to either raise money for their nonprofit, help their school get a gym, or sell more chocolate-covered pretzels like we unearthed the last time we were here. So that, to me, excites me. Some people are texting in saying, look, you know, Gary Vee sounds like a great guy, but this complaining thing, I don't understand. He's probably from a life of privilege, or he's right. from, he had a head right. start. Right. I have you know, three jobs and 15 kids. He doesn't understand. This complaining thing, how can this apply to everyone, no matter where you're from or what you're up to. I, I was born in the Soviet Union. 
My family came here with zero. I lived with nine family members in Queens. So because of you guys, Hillary lost the election. Maybe. Maybe. But I think anyway, that's what we're hearing, but I don't but, know for a fact. But I think Hillary should look at herself, just like everybody should look at herself in every situation. You're right. And so I think that I understand what people may think, but listen, I couldn't speak the language. I got made fun of because I couldn't. I was a DNF student for the first 18 years of my life. I was told I was a loser because I grew up in the 80s and 90s when education was the only way. There was no entrepreneurship. There was no tech. There was no whiz kids. And so I'm thrilled what people are going to think. By the way, I have friends that are rich kids and have trust funds, and all they do is complain. Complaining is a flaw at the highest level of our current society because America has been so good for so long. You know what we complain about compared to what our grandparents and great-grandparents complain Talk about? about? It. I don't know. I mean, it's really hard to complain about theoretical issues compared to actual slavery, compared to actual Great Depression. I love when kids are like, the economy's bad. I'm like, you are an idiot. I'm like, do you understand the historical nature of where we live today and what's going on? Again, I don't want to dwell on it too much. The internet has changed everything. It is fundamentally created opportunity for everybody. The problem is people don't want to put in the work. Uh, what's up, Bethany? I think about the people who you surround yourself with as conveyor belts or, um, or um, what are the like at the airport. Yeah, the... Uh, people movers, yeah. You can either walk against it and the people around you are pulling you backwards as you're fighting to go forwards and it's taking you twice as long. But have you ever walked along with one of those? You go twice as fast. And if you run, you go like three times as fast because everyone around you is pushing you forward. It's a forward. walkway. It or, really is. Or you could decide to be the leader of the bunch. Once again, we're sitting here talking about all these outside forces. It's my friends that are dragging me down, right? Like, I'm with you on that. To me, if everybody just chose to be a leader, and that's not in everybody's DNA, I get it, but it's just accountability. It's just accountability. Back to Scary, we were talking in commercial time. All these emails I get from all my friends at North Hunterdon High School, big shout out to Hunterdon County, New Jersey, right? Everybody says, you got so lucky, it's so awesome, you're so lucky, you're so lucky. I'm like, guys, you were going to the Jersey Shore and hooking up with chicks, and I was working 13 hours a day. You never like, hooked up with a chick ever? I have. But, <laughs> Do you want to buy pictures of it? I have pictures of it. Yes. <laughs> but, but, but this is very real. Like, I, I, since I was in the seventh grade, I did not have a summer day off. Like, I need everybody to understand what that means. I mean any days off. Like, all of them. From the day school ended until we came back, I worked at Shoppers Discount Liquors in Springfield, New Jersey. And so, like, that built the foundation. I deserve it because I put in the work. So even if you have been living a life of leisure and going and hooking up with chicks at the Jersey Shore, even in your, in your 40s even, <laughs> since you're still doing it, you can actually start over right now and start dedicating your life and, to and making throw, new things happen. And let's curveball. Or that could be an awesome life. Here's my thing. You could do whatever you want. You could work all the time and build a trillion-dollar empire, or you could be on six softball teams, be in the Jersey Shore, and make 71 or 43 or $39,000 a year. Here's my punchline. If you can deploy self-awareness and know what makes you happy, just stop complaining. You made your bed. It's good. It's good. And every scenario you just described is, is fine. It, it's perfect. They're it's just, all great. They're all great. Here, Sheldon no, had a quick Sheldon. point. What's that, Sheldon? Real, real quick, just to piggyback yes. off of that. Um, you can start it at any time. And one of my favorite videos, you can look it up, it's when Gary goes uh, thrift shopping with his brother uh, because an extra $100 a weekend matters to a lot of people. There's, right? There's a this lot of people. This is what's happened the last couple of months when I was doing radio, Shaw and you guys and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, people are like, yeah, but how do I make money for real? And I was like, okay, here's one way. Go garage sailing or go to thrift stores. Get an app on your phone for eBay. Look up stuff when you're at those places. You see that it's a dollar at the thrift store and it's selling for $11 on eBay. Buy it and then go sell it. You remember what you bought? You, you bought a Wawa Wubsy doll for a dollar. And I sold it for $11.99. I sold it for $11.99. I would have paid $15 yeah. for that, by the way. Exactly. Damn it. <laughs> it's fantastic. But, but it's, it's real. It's but, there But for listen you. to it's how practical and simple that is, but Anyone we just don't do. think of those things. Gary Vee, you're fabulous. I love you. Ow! You're the best. Gary Vee. Yeah. Gary Vee.